Go ahead. I'll just ask the question again if I yes. can remember what the question was. What do you think of it? Which it was, was like, sort of like you were at the Horizon yeah. event in Petaluma, uh -huh. and so you like you, you got some takes, and you've been following this for quite a while. And so, you're, what do you think? Well, my that it's a very limited framing of the issue. It's limited and limiting. Yes. In the possible solutions, I think of it as a balancing issue. If you take the three primary. Uh, elements, you know, you've got housing, you've got population, you've got uh, traffic, transportation, and so it's out of balance. You know, we, say we have a lot of pop po population, maybe not as much housing, maybe um, jobs, maybe we, we have lots of jobs, but so if the so only solution is let's make more um, housing, mm. That's only one piece or one possible solution. What about if we had fewer jobs or fewer people? But those kind, those are kind of taboo kind of subjects or ideas, you know. Well, because jobs, you know, oh, we have to be, we have to boost up the economy, you know, and and uh, so so the idea of well, let's just make more housing, you know. That's like I say, that's a very limiting. Right. I like your concept of the frame. Is it's self-limited. It's based on sort of a, a, a fake construct. When if we're talking about you, you could you've got this thing with like okay, so you get your jobs, and then you need the housing to support it, and then you need jobs to support the housing, and we're doing this and this and this, and this right. is what we usually see in California is like a boom-bust cycle, and it's based on an unsustainable economic model to begin with, and that's sort of at the ground of being that we're not addressing here. Well, the, the way I think model. of it is is from just from a like a, a clinical problem-solving mm. perspective. So, what's the problem? You know, well, people. Uh, are commuting in. People causing traffic. have to drive far away. They're, they're not housing. Out, causing they can't traffic. live. So, so what's the solution? Well, you know, what if we put jobs in different places? Every once in a while, you'll hear that yes. comment on the. Yes. It's kind of a fringe comment, right? Yes. Well, what if we put the jobs over over here instead of over here? Right. You know, and and this discussion with Silicon Valley and Apple, and you know contributing whatever money, billions of dollars to help with the housing issue. Well, you know, so, so from, like again, from a problem solving perspective, if you limit the, the, the description of the problem, then you're limiting the potential solutions. Of course, of course. Whereas if you include, you know, a true analysis, mm -hmm. then you have more options of what the solutions might be. Exactly. So, so, so you don't see this process as necessarily taking into a whole system's account. This is a limitation. So, so the Plan Bay Area thing is it? It's kind of it. My sense is it has the assumption. The assumption is the current framing. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Yeah. We need more houses. But again, the one thing that I, I like to say is the idea of, you mentioned the economic model, you know, yeah. that forever growth. You know. Yes. Yeah. It's like, one way to look at that is that that's how cancer works, right? You know? Right. It's like yeah. cancer Amen. is just unlimited growth. Unlimited growth. Unlimited, undifferentiated growth. And eventually what happens? It kills the host. It kills the host, that's right? right. Yeah. Or you have to apply these horrible... <laughs> That was good. That was good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Why don't you take it a little bit farther and say what other factors, ask him what other factors do you think should be included in this? Well, we can add that in. I think Stephen's getting some okay. thoughts here. So ask, ask so, the question because so, this is a discussion. This isn't okay. like an interview with the, the So you've made some really good comments that I think that are really important. So, and you feel like the, the discussion is limited. So what other factors would you add for people to be thinking about, for instance, just where we are right now, because this is where this event is taking place, what kind of problems do you think this population faces uh, in terms of, uh, well, I guess population, transportation, uh, environment, food security, food security all sea that level kind rise, of stuff. Climate yeah. change, flooding. So where would you put that, where would you put those factors in here? I haven't thought it, I haven't thought it to that extent because again I just think in terms of 
even the idea of affordable housing, because affordable housing is part of the discussion, housing. you know. But but that kind of, in my mind, that kind of muddies the issue, mm. you know. And like the Mime Troop said this year, it was great. They said all housing affordable if you got the money. <laughs> <laughs> It's a like, really good line like because that. the affordable housing is still based on an income level that many of these folks do not have, which is why they're couch surfing and sharing apartments and I don't know how many families or people in one particular place, way over the number of people that it was designed for, because they can't afford right, housing. Right, right. Yeah, so I, I don't really know. My, my sense is that the current uh, approach a lot of the focus is on affordable housing, but the current approach is, is woefully inadequate, you know, and I don't know what the right, you know, the right uh, approach is. Well, this is, this is where, um, for me, we, um, we had a tour of Napa. Napa had this incredible problem of the river flooding mm -hmm. and bit drowning businesses, and their downtown was going to hell. And what they did was they convened for two years a stakeholder group of environmentalists, business, you name politicians, residents, every group you could think of. And for two years this group met to look at the problem in a whole systems way and decide what needed to be done. They came up with a plan and they, they had to do an assessment for it. They had to fight an Army Corps that just wanted to dredge the river, which they didn't want to do. They had to, and, and they came up with a plan. It was incredibly ambitious. And they got the assessment with, I think, it was like 80, 90 percent of the people who were assessed to do this. They moved railroad tracks. They raised five bridges. They built a bypass channel. But they yeah. did it within the context of having a really well thought out plan that would address all the issues that were causing the flood. So they looked upstream as well as downstream. They looked at locally. They, they worked at it. So to you can hear to what we have. Oh, what we're seeing here, event. we're not seeing anything. Uh, I don't know what we're seeing here. I have to go in and take a look at this, but I, I liken it to the parent who tells the child, okay, you need to go to bed. You can go to bed in five minutes or ten minutes. What do you choose? It's, it's a false choice, like you said. It's not a good choice. It's, it's a false choice that's been framed. Here's your choices. It's not really exploring the issues, and it's not exploring them in a deep enough way to solve the problem. It's so just a band -aid. Here's a suggestion, is that people go inside now, especially if you've never been to the pop-up events, okay. mm -hmm. so you can actually see how it's happening. Okay. Then, and Stephen, maybe if you could film some of people being in there just with the interactions of how you, whatever you're interacting, and then to come back out here at some point where we could get some more video tapes of comments of what you witness and what you see from okay. the side. All right. I don't think that they're ready for us yet. They're really? still doing oh. Oh, story time. Oh, yeah, just story time. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, let me let me let time. me go in and check, but I think they're still doing that. You want me to go check and see, and you guys keep talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I was sort of wondering what you think about. Okay, so close by here are, you know, we're at sea level. Yeah. Same as the smart train. Mm -hmm. Same as the public bus station. Same as parts Same as the synthetic biology labs, right at the where the freeway meets uh, Second Avenue or whatever it is. And then we've got, um, and then we've got the dump, which is below sea level already. And sewage treatment plants, which are at or yeah. below sea level. So right. those are all in very, really close proximity to this area, and. Um, yeah. I just think that maybe we should be putting those little pieces of the puzzle together too because if you're going to talk about an emergency evacuation plan which has been the big thing that everybody's talking about right now especially with the fires with the fires everything. yeah fires with and flooding. then what happens to the synthetic biology labs what happens to the dump what if we have flooding what if we have any kind of emergency what happens to this population who is living day to day or month to month with no extra resources. We see the homeless problem that's happening in San Francisco all over the day. Every underpass is un unbelievable now. And um, yeah, where's, where's this the plan? Where's the what's plan? the plan for these people for evacuation centers?